Wine bottling. Barrels. Streamline. Grape vines. Bottling lines. Grenache. Environmental consulting. Wine label. Hyphenated. Fun. <laughs> Hey, good morning, Ray. This is Amy Aiken from Colopec Solutions. We're looking at Blue Morph Tank Sanitizing Solution, and it is a chemical-free, water-free tank sanitizing solution that you can have in the winery. Blue Morph, that's the area of the spectrum that the wavelength is at about 360 nanometers. And what that does is when it comes into contact with bacteria or fungi, it kills it. The whole idea is sanitized. So you clean the tank and then you put the light in, you turn it on, you sanitize it, and then you can put wine in it. No chemicals, no water, no pumps. Your operator puts the lamp in, turns it on, we program everything for you, and walks away. So that operator can go do something else. Yeah, it's a barrel unit and it sanitizes the surface of the barrel. The dose time for that is about five minutes. You know, the ROIs on these are within three years, typically. Um, you're saving a lot of water, you're saving time, you're saving chemicals, you're saving energy because you're not running a pump, and your operator can do something else. Well, we sell bottling lines, we sell presses, we sell pumps, we sell tanks. Oh, absolutely, from 30 bottles a minute to 350 bottles a minute and more. Well, it can be, and part of the issue is uh, in the last couple of years, we've had supply issues. So if they have their own bottling line, they can control their bottling time when they get the supplies. And a lot of people are investing in their own trucks, you know, bottling line trucks, and then they can take it from property to property or hire it out as a service. Colapacksolutions.com. So Sunridge Nursery is owned by Glenn and Terry Stoller. They've owned the uh, and started the nursery 40 years ago, and they're still running it today. Uh, we make grapevines, so we custom graft orders and then grow them in our outdoor nursery and in our greenhouses before they're ready to be planted in your vineyards. Oh, an endless amount. There are a multitude of clonal selections and varieties. There's a multitude of different grapevine rootstocks that can be used based on your soil preferences and your climate. So there's an endless amount. Glenn and Terry started it and they were originally um, started with not just grapevines but also trees as well. And then it just took off from there. They were delivering in the back of their station wagon and it just grew. Our website is sunridgenurseries.com. So we source and manufacture oak barrel alternatives, which we like to call oak complements, because they complement a lot of different ways, different aspects of the wine that people are making. We source from France, Missouri, anywhere in America that the oak trees grow. Then we season it at our yard in Sonoma, California, which has close proximity to the San Pablo Bay. So it creates a really nice sort of microclimate for the oak because we have really cold mornings and evenings and then hot days. So the oak really develops a very unique flavor profile that's unique to us because there's no other oak companies aging in Sonoma like we are. And then we mill it down into whatever format is what people are looking for. We do chips, flour, cubes, staves, anything really that anything but the barrel is basically what we do. So we have customers all over the world. We at this point we just sell French and American oak but there are other oak species that people are using. That is a barrel inner stave that we sell. It's a patent pending product that we developed that you can take a neutral barrel, pop the top, and then add a unique flavor profile with oak staves into the insert that, you, that we put into the barrel. And then it just takes neutral barrels and allows you to get more use, second use, second life out of them, which is good for a lot of reasons, sustainability, economic sustainability, and producing a better product. Our website is www.innerstave.com. We can also be found on Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, all at Innerstave. And you looked right at the camera, so you're a pro. You know what you're doing. <laughs> he said it's his first time. <laughs> it's my first time, I promise. So we have a 45-foot trailer. Uh, that trailer houses all of the equipment necessary to get wine from tank into bottle. Uh, we, so we get that wine put in the bottle, 
we cork it, we screw cap it, we capsule it, we label it, and then it shoots out the other end, gets put back into those box cases, and uh, off to the market it goes. We do book out pretty far in advance. That being said, we have a pretty flexible schedule, uh, so we're always able to fit people in. Uh, interestingly enough, you mentioned harvest. Uh, that is our slowest time of the year because all of the wineries are so focused on making the wine. Um, so that's a great time for us to kind of go through our yearly maintenance. Um, and then the rest of the year, probably December on through the following mid-September is just kind of going for it. <laughs> We see a lot of rosés and whites being bottled in the winter months, December, January, February, and then you start seeing all of those reds come through more in late spring and throughout the summer. Typically, our bottling line is always in motion, so we go from winery to winery to winery, uh, rarely any uh, off time in between, so we're kind of always in motion. HerdMobileBottling.com is where you will find us. For the wine business, what we do is we help with the winery general order that's by the State Water Resources Control Board. They have this order which if you discharge a certain amount of wastewater, you need to follow the requirements. We help you with all those compliance issues. That's kind of where we come in because water is such a sacred resource right now. They need people like us, consultants, to help kind of protect it. So what you're going to want to do as a winery is ask yourself how many gallons do I discharge? And if it is over 10,000, then you're going to have to start thinking that you're going to have to contact the water board. If you don't already have a waste discharge permit with them, this new winery order, you have until 2024 to get on board. And in, once that's on board, the water board can come out, ask you, do you have a waste discharge requirement plan going? And if you don't, you could get cited. So it's right now they're trying to get everyone involved that if you're discharging a certain amount of water, you're going to want to be part of this winery order. Our website is condorearth.com. And right there you can find all our capabilities and figure out which one you need. Well, designing wine labels starts with having a client that needs one and uh, an interview process with them where we learn about them and what their needs are and what their backstory is. And uh, in the end of the day, we're trying to design a label that tells their story and sells their wine. Well, in this case, this wine was an innovation for Rodney Strong, and we wanted to represent the entire life cycle of uh, the grape from vine to bottle. And so we developed this very uh, high-tech infographic that shows you the life cycle of the grape at, at, on its journey through being harvested into the winery, crushed, fermented, um, and all the way through bottling. And it's all represented there. And it takes a little work to, uh, to follow the path, but it's, make, that makes it interactive. And that's something that a good wine label should do is draw people in and make them inquisitive about it. Every project's unique and it has its own solution. And if you look through our portfolio, you'll, you'll see that there's not a common thread of a look. And you, there might be a little bit in some things, but you know, I like to think that's this, the attention to detail, mostly. The wine brand is called Juggernaut, which means unstoppable force. And this is a, a big, fruit-forward, juicy Cabernet, hillside Cabernet. And we probably did 70 different explorations on this before we settled where we are, um, just looking at different ways to express this unstoppable force. And it ended up being this, I guess you'd call it a graphic novel style illustration. We worked with an illustrator from Russia. And this was before. And <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's great. And uh, th that's how it came about. It's AustinDesign.com, and Austin is spelled A-U-S-T-O-N, not I-N like the city. Tony, thanks very much. I appreciate it. It's great to meet you. Great to meet you. You're fun to talk to. Look me up. Oh, I 
think we have about 12 in our selection right now, uh, between French, American, uh, Hungarian, um, and a few few hybrids. You know, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Minnesota um, are the, the primary facilities for us there, primary locations. In a way, uh, since the uh, famous Phil Burton stepped aside, we, um, we we kind of slowed down a little bit on that. But we still sell Cooper's supplies, uh, still do repairs in, in a way. Um, but Phil was the backbone with a lot of that. Yeah, we still see him around, and uh, everybody asks about him. So he's, he's not forgotten. He's still around. The industry, the people, you know, the uh, the wine. Um, it's it's a fun place to be. Um, you know, a, a lot a lot of great people, a lot of good conversations. Uh, you know, over a glass of wine. Yeah, so Nadalier.com. That is N-A-D-A-L-I-E, Nadalier, and then Barrel Builders it would be the second way to find us. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is fortunate walking around the wind floor at the conference, and who do I run into but our old friend, Marisa Taylor. Marisa, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Ray? Good. Um, well, I've been helping out of my friend Tim Milos, uh, working with his clients, um, and just figuring out, having a great time. Uh, Harvest was really uh, exciting uh, and was able to make uh, Pinot, Chard, and Bordeaux varieties this year. So just having fun, making wine, doing what I love. For me, it's about kind of getting my uh, sense of the pulse of what's going on in the industry and, and went to a couple of the, the talks that they had here. And then honestly, just kind of walking in, touch and base and just, you know, make those connections with folks. It's really great to be in person and to see folks, especially, you know, given what we've been through as an industry in the last few years. Historically, I've made, probably would say, more Bordeaux varieties, but I do have um, experience with uh, Burg Burgundian varietals, so Chardonnay I did at my last gig. We did make some Chardonnay as well, and, and sparkling and all that good stuff. So, yeah, it's just been fun to kind of get back to where I started. Ooh, that's a fun one. Well, this year uh, I did help with a Grenache, which was fun. So it was fun to kind of get into something I hadn't done. Um, but honestly, I love all grapes. I, I don't discriminate. <laughs> it's about the process for me. I love the hands-on nature and the people and just learning as much as I can. And uh, it's just been wonderful to work with many different winemakers. And you just continue to, that journey of, of, it, of educating yourself. Wonderful to see you. We represent a manufacturer that's been around for 153 years, family-owned business, um, a Portuguese company. And so everything that they do is cork. Um, and so natural corks, you know, as we know, come from a tree. Trees can live 200 plus years, and the more we harvest them, the healthier and longer they live. And actually when a cork tree is um, harvested, it takes up more CO2. So that's just a tidbit that a lot of people don't know. Um, it's the tree that keeps giving. And so I love working for this company and, and selling corks because not only do we like pulling them out of the bottle, but we're not selling plastic. We're not taking the trees down. We are harvesting them every nine years. And so um, as long as there is good weather, rain, um, you know, the environment has a lot to do with it. So we need to take care of our planet so we can keep pulling corks out of bottles. They're micro granular, so they are cork. The only thing that makes them different is their natural cork that are ground down to one to two millimeter pieces. And so um, that's part of our recipe. We're not grinding them down to a dust. And the corks that we have, we don't add plastic cells. Some of our competitors in the industry do add plastic. There's no need to add plastic. Cork has the ability to seal and has this compressibility that allows it to be a good seal. And so we're about 82% natural granulates with the binder that allows it to be put together and create the seal. And so these corks are great. They're great in the bottle, you know, that's gonna be drank tomorrow. They don't provide all of the oxygen that a natural cork will after a long period of time, but they're good for everyday wines and wines that are up in, in the bottle for, you know, three to five, seven years maybe. We're at ACICclosures.com. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and the works. Nice talking to you.